Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Warmed up, did some uh, updates last night working the software. We had inadvertently made a mistake on our wiring when we plugged it in that uh, we had air temperature sensor plugged into the wrong port. Uh, we have it, we read the air temperature in the plenum and in a runner. They were reversed, so it could change the air fuel ratio a little bit and what it sees. But um, other than that, we're ready to go. We got a hot rod here. We're waiting for our call up here for ProMod today. After our sort of test run last night, obviously with a valve train problem, we, with the power management on this car, it's it's only ignition uh, timing control and boost control. We don't use cut of any kind because when we tried cut before, this engine has a affinity to backfire and try and blow the burst panels out for whatever reason. So we're working on the theory that uh, the extra boost that we are now trying to run, which we haven't run previously other than one time, is potentially trying to hold the exhaust valve shut when it tries to open. And that's what's making it break the valve train. So I've turned the boost down to a number which we've made full quarter mile runs with in the past. I, I expect it to run a 580 something, maybe 88, 89, something like that. And that'll for sure get us in the program. We're gonna chase him around the pits for the next 30 minutes. He can jog it off. You guys are supposed to run that it helps you, don't it? Yeah. You're quicker on the light. Yeah. French fries, that'd be good. They can do a pretty both of those positions. You can't go after that top spot. Creep in. I tried and tried to get it to move. It wouldn't move, so I just left. Good data, anyways, and I'm sure it knocked the rocker off of it and blew the burst panel out of it. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to think. Uh, Suspicious that we're going to continue to have this problem. We might have to come up with a different game plan. So, how many burst well, panels you have? I have more. So, uh, we'll have to look at the data might tell us something this time because it hasn't told us anything before so maybe it'll tell us something this time this is not that i actually don't know why it wouldn't break that time i think there's a crack in this tube right here maybe i can see i think that's a crack right right there at the yeah. Well where it's yeah. Off. there's another one so that's another one i think well, there was oil there before, but it's in a strange spot. Just dripping there. Let's take it off. Not seeing anything obvious. Nothing obviously broke here. Tell him to leave the welder on because we're coming in. He's what? Yeah, just walk right back there. He's rolling uh, some exhaust for a racer knee. We've been doing a lot of that lately. Welded a completely. A, a complete top to an intake manifold for a guy last night. And uh, boy, was he happy. We're inside our mobile shop, and this is why I have the trailer. It's simple things like this. It's my air. I can see it plainly. To make things look nice, um, I try to polish stuff, and sometimes there's a fine line to when you've polished too much and you ruin the integrity of the weld. And that's exactly what happened over here. We have a small little crack that we've We've developed and we've identified, and it's right where that weld was at, so that's clearly my fault. So um, we're gonna go ahead and repair it right now. We're gonna fire up our little welder that we carry along with us. It's a pretty slick little deal, and um, Ramon right here is gonna give us a hand. He's a, a friend that uh, I just met here locally in California. We're racing there. 
He's in business with Ed. They build sand cars, suspensions unlimited, and uh, Ed's the driver, is what I'm talking about. It's it's family here. I mean, everybody just can't wait to chip in and do their part and show what kind of talent they have. So it's it's, it's truly remarkable what, what a team feels like when you feel like we're all in harmony. And this is what it's like, so pretty cool. Watch it out. We have all evening. It's easy, it's not like it's... We'll take a swing at it, how's that? Okay, I'll go talk to you. Switch it out. It's not fucking, it's eating oil and it's making it do something. Yeah. I don't know why, it, I don't, I can't see anything wrong. I don't understand why it's doing So when Doug was trying to adjust number uh, seven? All right, man. It just wanted to keep hissing at him and stuff. This is strange. Nobody knows what to do to take the to take the motor out. Like they don't know what to, what all needs to come off. So we need to discuss how yeah, let's to have get it out. Okay. So I got those guys going to the lift gate, starting to get the bullet out. That's Doug, the driver, and Alan is going to work on getting the new bullet out because it's a long process to get the lift gate out. We want to take the front end of the car off. Everything on this motor should be just completely stayed intact. So everything goes back on it because we have wiring harnesses, we have all the proper hoses for the oil pump and stuff like that. So when we go, so we got to take the headers off, we'll take the intake tubes off, and then that's where it starts. We got to drain the water out, and the converter, the converter, the converter's got to get loose. That's right. Turbos don't have to come off, right? No, turbos stay on. And Just the header comes headers off. Headers comes off, right turbos there, yep. stay on, obviously yes. the tank pipes off, yep. uh, oil tank out. Well, fuel the best thing to do is go get the motor out and look what's on another motor and see how complete it is. You'll take out. No, fuel take no, out, no, this all that stays. That shit can stay and it yep. just lifts straight fuel up. Pump, yep. Why everybody's here? Yes. Don't grind any welds ever on the race car. Don't do what? Grind any welds. Oh, Demolish yeah. Demolish anything. Okay. Yeah. We've been through this before, but don't worry, that'll yeah, be ground off next time. Now we got witnesses. It's on camera. It's a fucking, it doesn't even need witnesses. I'm my own witness. <laughs> all right, I told the camera, motherfucker. We're going to change the engine out. We have a problem with the piston, I think, and it's starting to blow compression where we don't want it. So um, I've always had another engine sitting around, so we decided to load it up, and good thing we brought it along with us because I think we're going to utilize it. So that, we're changing it out right now. It'll probably take us, my guess, give me four hours to see how we do. I think it's heavy. <laughs> Thanks for helping. Yeah, that'll be the next ferry coming up here. Frank, you show up. Cascade Lock, Rory Grazer, and the 430 on the right hand side of Rory Okay, bring her down! Frank wanted to do this work with, I think we're going to see a very different Mustang on the right hand side of the race. Locked into the free stage with a lot of hot rollers all up New Mexico. Very good, I thought. We've been having this problem where it's trying to backfire and it's on this side of the engine, right? And we just brought it back after the last backfire and all the valve train's still on it. But we can hear a whish noise when you're cranking the engine over. So there's compression leaking from somewhere. It stops when you take the number five plug out. What's going on is it's burned the deck of the, or the, of the head of the block around the number five, in between the five and seven cylinder around this head stud. So this compression leak is, is either uh, just letting compression leak out because there's a problem with number five or it's potentially going to number seven Which is making it backfire up in the intake either way. We're going to swap the motor. But that's that's the root cause of our problem
There you go. We're clear so far. Well, the rack is good. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, we're out of here. We're washing it. Just it allows us to when we reassembled look for leaks easier. Otherwise, you know, if there's residue, we don't know if it was there prior or not, if we got a new issue, so. And it keeps the hands cleaner so your hands aren't slipping on bolts and stuff like that. You can just work more efficiently, I believe. And I had a whole case of brake cleaning I needed to burn off. Are you ready to drop the motor back in? Yeah. Then just put it in. It'll probably take me an hour to take that converter apart and like change the clutches and shit in it if we have them. Well, I'm telling you, we can have this thing running about two hours or less. It's 5.15. We have a shot at making the next round then, when they pull something. Then just let's put Stick it together it. Okay. and I'll take the converter out even after well, it's this Well, one thing tomorrow, about it is you're gonna know the difference between everything then, between this motor and other motor. Good? Close enough or no more? Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's gotta turn this way. Now, this way out. Now, down a little bit. Down like two inches. Set it all the way out. Set it on the We're on the perch over here. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah, we're on the perch. Gotta get the back. Yeah. Is that an hour and 15 minutes? No, hour and 23 minutes. <laughs> we're doing good because we don't do this every day. So if you're a top fielder, you already would have missed the next round. So we suck basically. No. We're rocking it. You want to see something cool? Badass racing all for a badass car. Make sure it's got pressure again. Three hours made smoke. We're uh, gonna double check the tension in our fuel pump belt, and then we're gonna build a bunch of heat in here and uh, put a hood on it and pull up the staging lines. I think we got a hot rod that'll go A to B here. If it goes A, B, I think we'll run a five. And uh, it'll get us a good, solid uh, platform to work off of for Q4 tomorrow.
258. No shoots. No shoots. They were all tangled up, balled up. They went in, in through each other and just wadded up. Great, right, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, fucking right perfect tune-up, man. Stopped the shit and still went 591. Oh my god. Doug sent me a copy of the time slip. Yeah. 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 <laughs> good job. Yeah, good job, dude. Yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't laugh. leave the starting line. <laughs> weird. It, it like stopped and didn't go. I don't know what it did. It's very strange. Well, it got some data. You know what? I think when it went 602, 260, it went 114, 60 foot. It didn't go 205 to the middle, though. It went 203. Something made it not want to run down the back. No. He didn't, we didn't hit the throttle until, look at 281. Yeah, he fucking we didn't double, hit, he didn't double hit clutched it. Uh, <laughs> I think he, he might have got scared. <laughs> he got scared. Double clutched it. That's what he did. Tuna band, he got scared. <laughs> Well, it's disappointing because we obviously have a consistent issue. You know, that was obviously the morale goes up anytime you make a good run. And so that 591 to 258 is great. However, you know, looking at the time slip, I mean, look, watch it leave the starting line and it's it's dead. Like there's, I don't know why, but it won't, it goes 114, 60 foot. There's no wheel speed. I don't know why. It, we'll have to work out what that is. And then at the other end of the racetrack, so this is a thousand foot mark, this vertical dashed line here, thousand feet, just past a thousand feet. You see this this jog in the engine speed where it quits going up and starts going flat. And then you can see a corresponding drop in the number four EGT. The temperature of the exhaust on that cylinder starts to drop, which indicates that that cylinder is not running. And then the, the most obvious thing is this jump in manifold pressure where it stops opening the intake valve on number four. And so it's effectively got seven cylinders to supply with air instead of eight. And so the pressure jumps up right when that cylinder stops yeah, moving air. So I, I see this in the data and I'm like, look, I'm sure the number four intake rocker's off of it, which now they have the valve cover off and the number four intake rocker's off. So we saw the same valve train problems that we had with the other engine, with this engine, which isn't a shock because they're twins, but um, we'll try and solve that. And man, if we can get the thing to leave the starting line like it's supposed to, we, we should be able to go at least a 10th quicker than we went. Uh, and if it runs all the way to the finish line, no doubt the speed will be better than 258 if it's got all eight cylinders instead of seven. We're looking for a little small, what's called lash cap fell down in there when the bolts broke over there. So, do we have the valve cover off over there? Yep. We should fish from that e side. Well. Evidently. Well, bring your beer over here then. Hey, this is my fishing spot, motherfucker. You go back over there. Hey, no, well, fuck you. No, you no, my fishing rod. Oh yeah, you see me catch. Oh, <laughs> oh, now you want to use my fishing rod too? No, I was gonna let you use you my drink, fishing hey, rod. Hey, you gonna drink my beer too? Maybe. No, this is my beer. <laughs> so we're missing a lash cap. On there. And uh, we're going fishing for it, but uh, I, I think it was a simple mistake. The lash cap was sitting on top of the valve, uh, probably not all the way down. And, there was an uh, incorrect lash in there and it jumped out and created some havoc here, so we're going to crack that. But now we can't find the lash cap, so we got to go fishing. We might take the intake manifold out to go find it. And, um, bring it over my way then. That's just screwdrivers. It's free from the back. You're good. Yeah. That's all right. Where's the lash cap at? Could it be laying in the back of the cam here? Look, a, push, a lifter that's not in. Look, it has to go 180 away. Dang, I fixed that lifter. Oh, fuck me. It's, it's in this hole. Then, okay, give me a screw, small screwdriver, because a magnet doesn't get it. It's like jammed, I think. What's give the, me a small screwdriver to try one. to get it. What's the, oh, one of those fell on the ground. Not that small. That one. Maybe I could push it that way then. Poke my out. It, okay, fuck. So give me the so smaller magnet. Come back. Uh, no, no, no. It's got to come this way. I, there's something in the middle that's stopping it. Try and go back towards me then. Or try this through there. Towards me. It's definitely right here, 100%. But I pushed it back trying to get it to come back. It's like I can't. It's like, I, I don't have the like right tool. It's like, it's like it's got this going on. That's the smallest I got.
Got the last cap done. Got it? Yeah. What was it? It's in that oh, yeah, fucking hole that, that we were looking at. What was it? Just don't fucking use profanity and shit. Don't use fucking foul language? Yeah. And yeah. shit like that? Yeah, yeah. Shit just like that. <laughs> so here's the here's the culprit. This is the lash cap. So this guy is literally like, it looks like a little cup, right? And it goes over the valve stem, kind of like it would go like this if this was a valve stem. So we found it. Luckily, we took the intake manifold off. And it turns out it was in this little bitty hole right over here. If you look in the cylinder head, there's an oil drain back hole. And it was laying right there at the end of that drain back hole. And I happened to spy it when I pulled the intake manifold. When we pulled the intake manifold off. The bitch of it is that I had the camera in there earlier and I saw it and I thought that looks like it might be the lash cap, but we checked the hole in the back of the head and it looked the same. So we thought, nah, must not be the lash cap. So it might be the first time ever that I was wrong. Right? Okay. I have my side. You got your side? Mm -hmm. Get it tucked underneath there. Go slow. We're not going to. Yeah, lift it up. And back. It's got to be a really close spot right there. I think it's on it. Like a glove. We brought it back after a, a really uh, badass run of 591 at 258 miles an hour. Um, it was a soft tune up. It ran slow in the beginning. Then it picked up some big steam in the middle and then uh, towards the end actually let off early and we had a, he felt the cylinder go out. So still ran a 591. So we, we really think we got the recipe here, but we, we just been plagued with a little issue here. And I'm not sure we're, we're confident of how to, to, what it is yet, but we're, we're fixing essentially the broken parts here, but I'm not telling you that we're fixing what's creating the bro broken parts yet. So hopefully we'll have a better luck tomorrow and uh, we'll be up there for Q4 and um, wish us luck. Thank you.